What's up everyone? Sitting here sipping on some Hydro 20. You can pick this supplement up on the website. So I wanna make this quick video answering a great question. When, if ever, should form break down? Or more specifically, should I say, when, if ever, should form be allowed to break down? So the main reason I'm making this video is because I recently posted this past weekend a video of a young man named Thomas. Thomas is 16 years old, he weighs 150 pounds, and the video is of him deadlifting 425 American LBs. And just like I thought, there were a lot of people who had a lot to say about the video. You can go check it out on my Instagram, at Untamed Strength. If you guys read the comments, you'll see that a lot of people had a lot to say about his form. All units be advised, lumbar flexion has been reported on the deadlift platform. Please respond at your earliest convenience. 10-4, out. People were even criticizing me, saying, how could you let your students do that? I see his lower back rounding. Alan, this is pretty hypocritical of you because in your YouTube videos, you preach no lumbar flexion at any time during the deadlift. Before I even answer this question, I want to say that Untamed Strength is a gym open to the public. I am not a dictator who walks around the gym telling everyone what to do. Hips! Knees! What are you looking at? I straight head! Again, the gym is open to the public. If someone wants to come in, sign up for a membership, and max out their deadlift every single day, that's fine. Train Untamed. Do what you want. I only work directly with my personal training clients. Everyone else is free to do what they want. If someone comes up to me and asks for some help, I'm more than willing to give them some advice. As a beginner, it is crucial to learn how to correctly perform barbell movements. You have to understand bar path. You have to understand which muscles should be engaged, which muscles should be moving the weight. Uh, for the deadlift in particular, you have to learn how to pull with a neutral spine. You have to learn how to set your lats, how to pull with straight arms, how to use some leg drive, how to stand up tall, how to finish with your glutes. I would never encourage lumbar flexion. That was good, John. We're gonna do another set, but this time I want you to focus on rounding your lower back. You cannot and should not add weight until these basic fundamentals are understood. Once you can correctly perform the movement, you are now ready to increase your limit gradually. Now, I will say with 100% confidence that technique is very, very important. Lifting with crappy technique will only get you so far. However, there is some benefit to pushing yourself a little bit beyond your current limit, whether that means doing two or three more reps or adding 10 to 20 more pounds. Pushing yourself to your technical limit when your technique starts to break down has value because it exposes your weaknesses, your flaws, and what you need to work on. When I work with beginners who are deadlifting 95 pounds or 135 pounds and their back is rounding over, we're not gonna increase from there. We need to work on keeping your spine neutral, learning the fundamentals of the deadlift before we try to increase that weight because 135 at the current moment is your technical max. You can't go any further than that because you can't perform 135 with correct technique. Now let's go back to that Instagram video, Thomas. What you guys didn't see is the fact that he performed 135, with great technique, 225, 315, 365, all with very good technique. He even did 405, you guys can find that video on his Instagram, with pretty good technique. Once he jumped to 425, his technique fell apart a little bit and he exposed his weaknesses. His back started to round over a bit and he got a little too overhyped and jerked the hell out of the bar. As soon as Thomas was done with that pull, he came over to me, he took a look at the video, it was recorded on my phone, and he said, you know, what can I do to get better? What did you think of it? And I said, well, I think you got a little hi too hyped up and you jerked the hell out of the bar. This totally threw you out of position. And then obviously your back strength, your spinal erectors, your upper back was a little bit of a limiting factor. That's why your back started to round over. That's why that lockout was so difficult. So guess what? He's gonna go back to the gym. He probably already is in the gym actually right now, working on setup, pulling the slack out of the bar, and he's working to increase his upper back strength. A couple of months ago, that 425 pound deadlift technique or form that you guys are criticizing was his 385 pound technique. So let's, let's scale this. Let's say on a scale from one to 10, one being terrible technique, 10 being almost perfect technique. I would say his 385 deadlift was a seven out of 10 for technique. He established the fact that he needs to work on the top of his deadlift. He needs to work on strengthening his upper back because his upper back was giving out at 385. 
So for the next several weeks, he did a lot of block pulls, really overloaded the top part of the deadlift, and he worked a lot on upper back. This time around, once he got to 385, he smoked it. His back was neutral, the pull looked really good. Now, he has increased that 7 out of 10 385 to 10 out of 10. And now, 425 happens to be his 7 out of 10. Now, I understand that there are very conservative lifters. I, Thomas is an exception because he's a 16-year-old high school student. So, his recovery is awesome. Uh, he can be a little bit more reckless with his training. He can train at maximum pretty much every single day. I work with clients, competitive power lifters, who are well into their 60s, nearly 70 years old. We're much more conservative with their training. So let's say you're a little bit more conservative individual who has a day-to-day -day labor job, and you're thinking to yourself, if I hurt my back deadlifting, I'm out of work, that's gonna screw my whole life up. Pushing your absolute limits on the deadlift is probably a bad idea. However, if you are a competitive power lifter or a competitive strength athlete, you need to get to that maximum, get to that limit, because again, it exposes your weaknesses and your flaws. And honestly, failure has taught me a lot. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go out and fail every single day or even every single week to figure out where your flaws are and to figure out what you need to work on. What I am suggesting is that there is going to be some times in your lifting career where you need to push your limits, to go to the very top and flirt with that line push past your threshold in order to figure out where your weaknesses are and what you have to work on. Personally, I treat my failure days, or my, I should, shouldn't say failure days because that would mean I'm expecting failure, but I treat my maximum days, my absolute maximum days, my push the limit days as my competition days. I usually compete in a competition, whether it's strongman powerlifting, I've done Olympic weightlifting, uh, every three to four months I like to compete. So for that three to four month block, I will train for the upcoming competition. Once I get to that competition, I'm pushing myself to the absolute max because in powerlifting, you do not get points for form or beauty. You get points for how much weight you lift. So during those competitions, every three to four months for me, I expose myself to my limits. After every meet or competition, there's always some deep reflection. What could I do better? What did I suck at? What started to fall apart? What do I need to do to improve myself? I write it down on paper, and then I construct a plan for the next three or four months. Test again, get better, program, test again, and it continues getting better and better and better along the way. So in Thomas's defense, that one singular deadlift does not reflect his entire training plan every day on a day-to-day -day basis. His deadlifts do not look like that. They are very crisp and clean and very strong, very intense. I think he's a great deadlifter. And that's what got him to being able to pull 425 pounds, regardless of the fact that his form started to break down a bit. So to wrap this all up, there is a benefit to pushing your limit. It will expose your weaknesses, your flaws, and things that you need to work on. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching. Always remember, tread on time.